Minnesota is the land of 10,000 lakes. It accordingly has an active lake culture. It is seen locally in small towns and communities across the state. In Golden Valley, the Sweeney Lake Association envelops a passionate group of neighbors who have actively cared for their lake for many decades. In the spring of 2018, as the winter ice receded, Sweeney Lake residents noticed an unusual volume of dead fish. Winter kill is common year in and year out, but in 2018 the volume was far higher than ever before, which generated great curiosity and concern among lake residents. What do you think is the optimal environment for fish, basically? Okay. Um, well, why they're stressed this year especially, and they probably would be back to like 2013 as well, is we had really good ice and thick ice, and then on top of that we had the extended snow cover. So eventually what those two things will do is they'll limit the amount of sunlight that can get through that. Um, and then eventually you're not going to have enough oxygen produced by the plants in the water column. So then you have all these plants that die, and then all this bacteria that's going to break down the plants. And all that bacteria eating away at those plants is robbing all the oxygen from the water column. And so the fish that are in there that normally would need that oxygen don't have enough. And so eventually they're going to get too stressed out and they're going to die. So typically this is called winter kill. So this year, you know, Lake Minnetonka may set a record here for the latest ice out. So a lot of lakes were stressed uh, more than they usually are. So specifically too, the shallower the body of water, the more likely it's going to experience winter kill. Do you think that there's a link between pollution in the lakes and... There could be. If you have lakes that have uh, excess phosphorus, excess nitrates that are leaching into the ground, um, sometimes what you're going to see is you're going to see a, a, a huge amount of plants that grow then, which like I said, if they get covered up then by all this ice and snow, then you're going to have more plants going to the bottom, which then means more bacteria are feeding on them to break them down, which again reduces oxygen. So the things we put on our lawn, like phosphorus, nitrogen, if those, if you put them on too much, too thick, or when they can run into those bodies of water, they're gonna do the same thing in the body of water. They're gonna cause those plants to grow. To get more perspective on water conditions in Sweeney Lake, we interviewed Jane McDonald Black, a lake resident, a community volunteer, and a member of the Bassett Creek Watershed Commission. Tell us a little bit about how long you've lived on the lake. I just lived on the lake, I think it's 28 years. I am told that about, about 10 years before I moved on this lake that this was a crystal clear one of the highest water quality lakes mm. because it was spring fed and other water wasn't coming in. Um, and a lot of water comes in. For example, that holding pond, the shopper pond that they just built, the toughest thing about trying to rework that holding pond was that in a um, in some of the highest levels of rain, when we get a really significant rainfall, it goes up 12 feet. 12 feet. 12 feet. So and that's all. Is that is that water all coming off the highway or it's coming out 55 and 100? Yeah. <clears throat> that's you know you don't think about that when when you drive down a highway, but. All the salt that's put on that all winter, that that's just flows right in. What you're trying to do with the holding pond is you're trying to slow water down so the sediment can drop and, um, and make it travel as long a distance as you possibly can so that sediment can drop out before it starts getting into the lake. They assumed that most of the nutrients were coming in by the railroad track, but really, the, I think it was 80 or 85 percent of of the nutrients and the, and the pollutants, the things that are hurting the lake, are flowing in from Highway 55. So it's got this long, thin, kind of direct route right into Sweeney Lake from where most of the right. nutrients it are coming in. doesn't wind at all. Yeah, so, so they're trying <clears throat> to figure out a way to cut it, you know, so that it has to stop. And so they created, she created this floating baffle. Because so tell me about the aeration. One of the things that happens in a polluted lake 
is that um, you, you have a shortage of oxygen. And what the clean slow aeration system does is it adds very, at the bottom of the leg, it adds very small amounts of, um, of oxygen. The lake water is always turning the, the cold and the warm, and when it comes up, it can release some of the, some of the phosphorus. And, and so my understanding of aeration is that it, it helps stratify that water, it helps the lake turn over more and release some of the toxins, and it, um, most importantly, it adds oxygen in for the fish. We, you know, the DNR, when we sent them pictures of our fish kill this year, they sent back pictures, or they, they sent back a note saying that they think it's the low oxygen level. Well, we turned the aerators off for the whole year. I don't know if that's it. We also had problems this winter because we usually do aerate in the winter, but because of the study, we got going a little bit later than we usually do, and one of our aerators, we only had two going, and one of the aerators froze up mm. when we hit that really cold February snap. So you you shut down the aerators in part to allow the study, the study to the take its course so that there mm -hmm. wouldn't be too many variables, right? Right. And and then we we have heard you know people opinions that the fish kill has been higher this year. I've never seen a fish kill like this in my life. Is the the, the highest you've ever years seen? I, I mean, we really have more than a few fish. We had like is it twenty? Sometimes there were twenty one blue herons on the edge of that ice, and then we had five or six bald eagles and seagulls. So they were eating a lot of the fish kill. Do you have thoughts on, on what it's going to take to keep the water clean? You know, it's systemic. It's, it's, it's a lot of things, you know, and, um, you know, they can, they can do a lot of things to try and take phosphorus out, but hardly anything is more effective than if you rake up your leaves. Yeah. Or you sweep your street. And there's people that can answer this better than me, but but you can't just hurt one part of a system without hurting the entire system. And, you know, having a polluting lake or is, is going to have consequences. I mean, if we keep putting salt into our lakes, we are going to have, we're not going to have them. And yeah. it isn't going to take that long. When you think about it, it's easy to see how every element of our water system is connected. The lakes, the rivers, the streams, the aquifers, they're all part of one system. For the health of the environment, for the health of the lakes and rivers that we all love, for the quality of the very drinking water that we rely on every day, it's really essential that we work together to preserve this vital resource for today, and for future generations to come.